Thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this video. Helen Edmond is one of the very last true American boot makers that has over a hundred year history, but have they sold their souls to the profit margin gods like the rest of half the American old school brands by making subpar products and sold at a premium price? Or have they held true to their history and their values by making some of the best boots that you can buy in America? Well, we're gonna find out by cutting this thing in half and run through our test to really see if Alan Edmond is sold out because it is a tough time apparently for these old school businesses to compete with all the new startup brands because these new startup brands have resources at their fingertips that would cost tens of thousands of dollars a month just 20 years ago, like Shopify. You can run an entire multi-million dollar brand because Shopify is this all-in-one, easy to use commerce platform that literally anybody can use. And so I wanna give you the number one thing you can do to start the ball rolling that's pretty fail-proof. And I'm passionate about entrepreneurship because that's what all this is. The whole reason I'm doing this was because I love high quality goods, I love making stuff, I like designing stuff, and this entire business is all run on Shopify. My website's on Shopify, we sell the products on Shopify, we track our inventory. Basically anything you can ever imagine that you need to run a business, it integrates into Shopify through independent apps. So what is this number one thing I was talking about? Well, just find the easiest and most effective thing that you can do for your business every single day that takes five minutes or less, and just commit yourself to doing that one thing every single day as a bare minimum. And you'd be shocked if you just do that one single thing that takes five minutes, how much progress you'll make on your business, but more importantly, how much more motivated you're gonna be because you actually made progress. You actually did that one little thing that gives you that extra motivation to keep working. So thanks again to Shopify for letting me just take a minute to kind of explain that because I am very passionate about entrepreneurship and these platforms that actually make it possible and accessible to the entire world. So just take that leap of faith, just spend that five minutes a day. You'll you just never know what's gonna work and what's gonna pop off and next thing you know, you're cutting boots in half on YouTube for a living and all that's made significantly easier with the powerhouse tool of Shopify. So for a free trial of Shopify, please go to shopify.com slash Rosanville and thanks again to Shopify for sponsoring this video. And speaking of starting and running businesses, Alan Edmonds started a lot longer ago than I ever thought. This started all the way back in 1922 when Elbert Allen started making men's shoes in Belgium, Wisconsin using cork insoles, but had a really hard time effectively selling them and communicating the benefits of his new design. So in 1931, Elbert Allen partnered with Bill Edmonds, who was a salesman, to hopefully try to bring in some new sales, and they formed the Allen Edmonds Corporation. And as they started bringing in more sales over the next decade, um, world events happened, like World War II. So from 1942 to 1945, Allen Edmonds gained a lot of notoriety and popularity, and especially a cult following amongst the uh, military men who used their boots and wore their boots and became brand loyalists because of how much they love their boots during the war. But unfortunately, after all this new excitement and hope and, and invigorated interest in the brand, Elbert Allen unfortunately died in 1946 and handed the reins over to his son, Bert Allen. And Bert Allen took marketing to a whole new level because he tirelessly promoted the product, traveling all around the world, talking about the virtues and the benefits of Allen Edmonds shoes. And they were so confident in their product that they offered a guarantee promising to refund customers money if they believed Allen Edmonds were not the most comfortable shoes they had ever worn. And because of all this, the brand continued to grow and change and improve their products and improve their production until 1968 when Burt died as well. And it seemed like this was a tipping point for the brand because it's, it seemed like Burt was a key component to the Allen Edmund ethos and brand values because throughout the 1970s, it proved to be a pretty tough decade for Allen Edmonds, partly due to the general American shoe industry shifting so much of their production to overseas production and importing so many more cheap shoes to sell. Then by the 1980s, when importing was in full swing and foreign mass production was even more full swing, the Allen fa family sold Allen Edmonds to John Stolenwerk, who was committed to keeping the Allen Edmonds manufacturer in the United States. And when Stolenwerk took charge of Allen Edmonds in the 1980s, he faced some serious challenges because the company had just lost $400,000 after generating only $9.5 million in annual sales. So even though they made nearly $10 million, they lost $400,000 doing it. And rumors started to swirl that he had bought the company just to dress it up, to flip it for a quick profit. And in 1984, just four years after this $400,000 loss, the business was once again profitable, showing a profit in annual sales that had grown to $17 million, up from just $9.5 million in 1980. But more more importantly, their profits had gone up from a loss. 
But just like all businesses, right when things are looking up, they had a malfunction in their boiler burner and the entire headquarters burned to the ground, including $14 million worth of machinery and 50,000 pairs of shoes. So they went back to rebuilding and in 1988, after struggling to get back that early success that they had had, Solenworks partners had wanted to cash out and sell the company to Timberland. But due to that commitment he made with Allen Edmonds and the, the love of the brand, he refused to sell it. He put together a buyout where he gained 90% interest in the company. And the cool thing is, the the remaining 10% was given to the workers. Then throughout the 90s, it seemed like it was business as usual. And then the invention of the internet happens around the early 2000s and Allen Edmonds start selling their products on the internet, which we can only assume brought them in some much needed income and orders. But in 2006, it clearly wasn't enough because 90% of the shares were bought by the investment firm Golden Hahn Johnson & Morrison for $100 million. Also that year, probably not a coincidence, Allen Edmonds closes its Lewiston Maine manufacturing plant and moved its hand-sewn production to a new company-owned factory in the Dominican Republic, which true die-hard Allen Edmonds fans did not like because of that commitment that they made of making their boots in the United States. But unfortunately, it was not enough to save them because in 2013, Brentwood Associates acquires the company and then just three years later, it was acquired again by the company Calaris, formerly known as the Brown Shoe Company, who are the current owners of the company as of the recording of this video in 2023. And today, Allen Edmonds employs 135 craftspeople, many of which are second and third generation makers, and an apprentice program to train the new generation of craftspeople. And each shoe goes through a 212 step process and sees up to 60 different craftspeople before the shoe is completed. So Allen Edmonds in the early 1900s started off a little bit weak, brought in Mr. Edmonds to boost sales, saw a bunch of success through the war and up into the 1970s and 80s where the tide started to change and they started to struggle like most of the other US manufacturers at the time and have basically been changing hands every few years to a decade since to try to revive this great American classic while slowly moving some of their production overseas. But has Allen Edmonds sold their soul to the profit margin gods and made their boots cheaper and cheaper every year? Or have they remained one of the true high quality boot manufacturers that have stayed true to their over 100 year history that built the Allen Edmonds name? And that's what we're gonna try to figure out. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Allen Edmonds. The style is the Carter Waterproof. They weigh one pound, 13 ounces. They retail for $495. And they're made in what they say, handcrafted in Port Washington, Wisconsin with imported materials. And the way they position this boot is true dependability is comfort and style you can count in all conditions. Like most of our footwear, this waterproof boot is built in Port Washington, Wisconsin with a commitment to traditional American quality and hand craftsmanship. That's what we're gonna figure out by looking at the material, starting with the leather first. So like they said, this is a waterproof leather. We put a little dropper, droplet of water on there and it didn't sink in immediately like we saw in that Wolverine leather. So it looks like it's fairly waterproof. We did the waterproof test, passed with flying colors. But what about the quality of this leather? Well, we looked at the thickness of the leather and it comes in about 1.5 to two millimeters thick. It's, it varies a fair amount throughout the boot. But for a dress boot, it's right in that right thickness. I like to see two millimeters, but 1.5 is still like sneaker thickness and not, not too crazy of a crime, but two millimeters is, is ideal in my opinion. And looking at the cross section still has plenty of the grain in it and it's a nice saturated pull-up leather. It's a fairly firm leather that has a lot of character in it, but is it $500 boot leather? I think it is, you know, it's a little bit on the thin side. It's maybe not the most premium leather, but it's still, it's still good enough. What about the inside of this boot? Well, it is fully lined and Honestly, the lining leather is not that great of a leather. It's just a typical lining leather with a heavy pigment on top. And it's not a bad leather by any means. It's just a, a typical lining leather. Nothing special, but nothing really to complain about. And it's lined up the shaft all the way to the vamp of the boot. But if you feel on the inside of here, there's a big old slab of glue. That's, it's like right around your pinky toe area. And so we'll see when we get it cut in half, but it seems like it's a little bit sloppy made when it comes to the lining and how this boot's constructed. Blah, blah, glue. So is this a $500 boot lining? It's been a little bit cheap feeling and looking for a $500 boot leather, but it's not crazy. So it passes, but just barely. And then if we look at the insole, it's a permanent insole and you can feel it's the exact same lining leather that's topping some, some foam. I don't know how much foam's in there or what else is underneath of there, but usually when you see this, it's they're trying to hide a little something, something on the inside. So we'll see what that lasting material is. Cause that, to me, that's the make or break point of this boot is, is this a cheap 
lasting material? Is it a cheap insole or is it high quality vegetable tan leather like you'd expect from a $500 boot? But then looking at the other components of this boot, it is a 360 degree Goodyear welt construction. It's got that split reverse welt that I like the, the look of. It doesn't have that fake stitching going on. It also has a leather slip sole, which is good to see for 500 bucks. And this outsole is a pretty decent outsole. It's it's not a Vibram outsole, which you'd usually expect to see, but it is a it's hide. Yeah, it's hide. It's it shide. It's gotta be it's hide. Outsole, which, you know, it's maybe not as reputable as, as Vibram, but it seems like based off of the durometer test, it was right around 75 shore A. And but judging off of the bar drop test, the puncture test, it seems like it performs about like you'd expect a Vibram outsole to perform like. So I think it's good enough. Once again, just like, it's not so great. I'm like, yeah, this is a $500 outsole, but also not so bad that it's like, no, this is horrible. But there is one thing that is horrible. And to me is completely inexcusable for a $500 boot. And that's that this hill stack is made of cardboard. It looks like leather but it's just painted to look like leather because it's all just cardboard. For 500 bucks, there's no reason to have a cardboard heel stack. Um, yeah, especially if you're gonna put a full length vegetable tan leather slip sole on there. You know, you're already putting the high quality materials in there. Why cheapen out on the heel stack? You know, and people are like, oh, it, maybe it's not gonna wear as poorly as leather because leather shrinks and, and grows if you get it wet. But so does cardboard. And if anything, I'd way rather trust the fiber structure in leather than the non-fiber structure of cardboard. It's just eventually gonna fall apart and disintegrate. So that is not up to the $500 boot standard. And that's what gets me concerned about this boot that once we have it cut in half that all the ends are gonna be nothing but garbage. So let's cut them in half and let's hope that the inside is better than that heel stack. All right, we got it cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing it, because it's the one way that allows us to grow on this platform to continue to cut more and more expensive stuff in half and cut apart two brand new pairs of boots and shoes every single week. So just do that free little click. That YouTube doesn't show you what you're subscribed to anyway. So let's see what's inside. So unfortunately, not great on the inside for Allen Edmonds because you first of all, you've got this really cheap, fragile counter material, which you really don't see in high quality boots at all. Usually you'll see leather or bare minimum like leather board, but to have that cheap of a counter material is pretty concerning. My hopes and dreams that it was going to have a leather insole are dashed because it looks like leather once again, but it's not. It's like a, it's almost like a really dense felted fabric rather than leather, which for 500 bucks, you would expect to see leather. And people make the argument, oh, it's for more comfort. Well, they also have all this foam packed into this boot as well, but that would give a little bit more squish and comfort to that harder leather insole. Plus you've got the cork underneath, which a lot of people say gives a lot of squish and impact resistance. I like leather feeling personally. It does have a wooden shank, which isn't my favorite, you know, uh, Solivair uses them and say they don't have a lot of issues with them, but I'd just rather have a steel shank or fiberglass where you know you're not gonna just break it because it is a very fragile piece. Oh my gosh, that is so fragile actually. It's like balsa wood in there. I'm gonna get this out. Okay, it's not, it's not balsa wood, but it is a fairly flimsy, it looks like oak. So not the worst thing to have that, but I personally would rather have a non wooden shank, especially on a boot that you're not gonna get the most support anyway, because there's not a lot of structural material in there. And then now you can especially see these big globs of glue right here at your toes. Imagine trying to break these in with that pressing on your pinky toe. That is not gonna be fun for anybody. So very disappointing on the inside, actually. I thought this was gonna be a lot better than what it is. So are these worth $500? It's a tough argument to make. You know, they are made in the United States. They are this like, time-honored brand, but for 500 bucks, that's a tough sell. 
you know, this is a lot more like a $250 boot. Like if you put this next to any Thursday boot, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's a Thursday boot because it's built in basically the same way. And I think it should be sold for around the same price, 200 to 250. You know, it is made in the United States. So maybe you bump it an extra 50 to a generous hundred dollars to make it in the United States. And it's still $350 max. So not worth 500 bucks. So as Alan Edmonds sold their soul to the profit margin gods, it sure seems like it, but also it, you can clearly see through their history, they've been struggling for a long time. The brand's been changing hands and each time a brand changes hands, it's not like it gets easier and easier to make that money back. Everyone's trying to exit the brand that they just drove into the dirt and try to make at least some money back. And so the person that buys it ends up buying it for a higher price, which is makes it an even bigger deficit to come back from. And that's why a lot of times when you see a brand be sold once or twice, it just continues to be sold because nobody can fix it. And it's because it just accumulates more debt and more garbage along the way. So is Alan Edmonds, the the brand that built the name, are they still making boots how they should? No, unfortunately they're not great. They don't make them like they used to and they no longer make boots in the way that built the Allen Edmonds name, which is a bummer. So how does this rank on our Mocktober board? Well, this is more of an Alden alternative. And I really thought this was gonna be the one that was gonna be the first to dethrone Alden, but I don't think it does. I would honestly put this underneath the J. Crew boot because the J. Crew boot has a few other components and upgraded materials that I would take over this one, even though it does have that leather midsole or slip sole. So right underneath the J. Crew. And for the overall board, for the last three years of Mocktober, I'm gonna put it in the same spot too, just under J. Crew. So the pursuit for the, the better Alden alternative rages on. I thought this was gonna be the one, but it is not. So maybe there's some credence out there. There's some things to point to to say that you really can't get a decent Alden alternative for a decent price made in the United States, which is really surprising. So let me know what other Alden alternatives you want us to cut apart for this series. And thank you guys so much for all your support and supporting uh, Shopify being one of our favorite sponsors. The Lasso link that's coming out, the Rose Anvil 2, the Rose Anvil Builds channel, and all of our handmade products that we make. It's the only way we're able to do this. So thank you guys. See ya.